welcome to my channel. My name is Abby and this is what I knit. Today is a pretty standard knitting update of what I worked on in January. I've got a couple finished objects as well as a few things on the needles. So I'll take you through all of that and let's dive in. So all of the projects I'm going to show you are brand new. I have not shown any of them to you yet. And two of them I actually started back in September and have just kind of been chipping away at them, including this sweater vest that I completed. This is a very different type of project for me. I don't typically go for pastels. I know that some of these colors are kind of bright. I guess there's only like maybe two or maybe three that can be considered a pastel, but I just feel like overall this reads very um, like Kind of eastery which is not normally my vibe at all but i will walk you through the inspiration behind this and kind of why like what led me to this project in particular so this is the mizoni vest by lindsay deegan i modified it in quite a big way i changed the stitch pattern from stockinette to garter stitch so it's Quite a bit different from the original pattern. Back in the summer I was going through my stash and I was thinking about different color combinations that maybe I wouldn't normally put together and I put these three skeins together and I really liked this. I'm a huge fan of pink and orange and red and orange as a color combo and I just thought this worked really well. Then the Taylor Swift Eras movie poster came out and that really got me thinking. I remembered these three skeins that I had and I had recently picked up this skein, this light purple from Ritual Dyes, and this really got me thinking. And I wanted to create something inspired by the movie poster. So that's when I had the idea of recreating the iconic vest or sweater tank that Taylor Swift wore in a music video that really blew up over the summer and it looked pretty easily recreatable so I feel like a ton of people jumped on the chance to recreate it and though it's not a unique idea in any way I just kind of wanted to throw my own version into the mix and just have fun playing with some colors that I wouldn't normally play with. So I was doing some swatching. I really liked the colors that I was working with. I thought it was something fun and interesting and I was just having a good time with it. But I was looking at the poster and realizing that there was one color missing, which was the sort of light teal blue color coming from the sequins on her bodysuit. So I did some more stash diving and I found this kind of darker teal. This was like the closest that I had in my stash, but it was a sport weight. And I also just, I didn't quite think that this really meshed with the rest of the colors. Like something was off and I, I didn't love it. I knew it was, it was too dark and just not quite the right tone. I did some in-person shopping at my local yarn store, but they really just didn't have what I was looking for. So I decided to go online. I found this yarn from Knit Picks. It's their Stroll line in the colorway Wonderland Heather. And I, it was a little bit risky because, you know, you're buying online and it's hard to know exactly what shade you're getting. But I do feel like this ended up representing all of the colors well in that poster. The pattern actually has a different color for the neckband, the sleeve edges, and the bottom ribbing but I decided in the end to use the same color and I actually didn't start out that way. I was pretty sure I wanted the neckband and the bottom ribbing to be the same color, but I thought it would be fun to try a different color for the sleeve edges. So I actually chose the blue color because I thought, you know, I like the way that all of this is working together. I just want to add like a pop and I don't know, bring it all together. So I tried that and absolutely hated it. I thought it was like ugly. So I quickly ripped that out like the same night that I did it and redid it with the purple. And I think it makes such a huge difference in the way the garment comes together. It's, it's just like anchored by that purple or something like that. I don't know. There was something about the blue that just really threw everything off. I think it only works as these like small stripes just like a few times throughout the 
garment. Another reason it took me quite a while is because I made a large mistake and it's kind of embarrassing to talk about it, but I will. So one of the like modifications, it's a very light modification that I made was to not knit the ribbing as deep as the pattern calls for. There's like a section, it's like maybe this big of ribbing in this color before you um, switch to the main chevron stitch pattern. And one of the things that you do to transition the ribbing into the stitch pattern is you knit short rows to fill in um, this, like these triangles here. So all I did was cast on in the tubular cast on and just get straight. I think I knit like maybe one or two rows of the one by one ribbing. And then I just got straight into the short rows as they are written in the pattern. What I didn't realize, and this was just like some mistake that I made along the way, is that I got the short row triangles and the stitch pattern off by one repeat. So where the stitch pattern comes down into a V, it was lined up with the peak of the triangle of the ribbing. And this did cause a little bit of puckering and it like it wasn't fully flat. I can't tell you exactly what was going through my head and I think that means that I wasn't thinking about it too much but there was like a moment that I, I got pretty far into the body I noticed it and I was like oh weird that like why are those why why did the triangles like kind of poke out right there and I thought okay well maybe the short rows in the ribbing stitch pattern like there's just something kind of going on there and I just need to block it so I blocked it and it didn't resolve <laughs> and I was like oh yeah no I totally effed this up by that point I was like either into the armholes or close to and this was a lot of knitting and I just knew I did not have it in me to frog it so I decided that to fix it, I would cut into my knitting. So I picked up the stitches at the top of the ribbing and then cut into the ribbing itself and undid all of that. And that was a little tricky. It wasn't a clean cut and it wasn't like a clean frog. So it took a really long time just to get it back to a point where I had the stitches at the right like stitch pattern and I did have to do some finagling and I had to pay really close attention to what was going on. It was also tricky because in this main stitch pattern there are yarn overs and not all of those got picked up properly on my first pass. So anyway, it was a little bit tricky, but I got there. And then I was positioned to work the ribbing upside down. So all I had to do was invert the short rows in the pattern in order to get the triangles to go the right way. And that time they did fit perfectly into the stitch pattern and it all worked out. And then I just did a tubular bind off and um, that was that. So all in all, like it was a fairly simple mistake to correct, but also kind of dumb that I made that mistake, but whatever, I fixed it. The other thing that I wanted to mention is on the armholes, I went down, I think like three needle sizes to make this look a little bit neater. So when I first did the blue, I followed the pattern exactly. And I felt like they were just very large and like flaring out in a weird way. And I just didn't like that. So I just went down a few needle sizes and I also picked up way fewer stitches, which helped again, like cinch it in. I think I followed everything else exactly to pattern. So again, on the shoulders, there are short rows so that the shoulders are straight and not in the chevron pattern. And then same with the front neck you do short rows here to account for the stitch pattern and make sure that your neck is straight. Also, all of the yarn that I used will be listed on my Ravelry project page as well as in the description of this video. So I know I didn't go through all the colorways and everything, but it was just mostly stash yarn and I just kind of used a bunch of leftovers and I feel like it's not worth going through each one. 
but uh, if you're super curious, um, you can find that out. Moving on to my next finished object. This is a muscle bear hat that I knit for my friend's baby. She is one years old, so I really hope this fits. You can see that I ran out of yarn here and that's why one of the sides is a different color, but that is the great thing about the muscle bear hat because once you fold it in, no one will know, or you can wear it that way if you want. I think it's kind of cute, but I also, I don't know how I feel about that, but I mostly just needed to finish the hat. So I just grabbed some scrap yarn that kind of went with the main color, um, but I think I'll give it to them like this. And um, maybe not even mention that the inside is a different color. Um, but anyway, here's the hat, it's really cute. So I used a fingering weight skein that I held doubled to get closer to like a DK weight. Um, I knit it on US 4 needles and all in all it worked up pretty quickly. Um, I used Magic Loop because it's a little too small to work the full thing on 16 inch circulars, but that didn't really slow me down too much and I was able to use a skein of deep stash that I really couldn't figure out what to do with. It's a single ply so I didn't really want to knit socks with it, um, but I think it ended up working out really cute for a little baby hat. It's so cute. The yarn is from a yarn dyer who doesn't dye anymore. Um, I think it was Oslo Micro Diary um, and I just picked it up from someone else's stash sale that they were doing on like Ravelry many years ago. So yeah, got rid of this uh, deep stash skein and I think it turned out really cute. I love all the different speckles. Um, it's like pink, brown, there's some blue and some like deeper purples and like a couple of black speckles, um, some oranges. Yeah, it's kind of all over the place in terms of color, but on this really um, kind of pearl gray background and I just think it turned out really cute. I really hope that it fits. I feel like it's a little small which was not my intention. I was trying to make it a little too big if it wasn't gonna fit. The circumference does match the Craft Yarn Council's um, dimensions for a baby head, but again, I don't know, it just seems so small. So we'll see. Um, I'm kind of nervous to give it to them because if it just doesn't fit at all, then that's not great, but hey, it is like really adorable and it was a fun mindless knit to work on um, in the middle of the holiday chaos. All right, so moving on to whips, I've got two to share. The first is in this tote bag. This is Pitch by Emily Green from Brooklyn Tweed. I cast this on in September. I talked about this in my last video where I went through a few of my knitting goals. One of my knitting goals this year is to finish this sweater. So I've got a whole year to finish it. I am working on the back panel and this is where I'm at. So I made it through the first section where it's just these different um, cables in between the background of moss stitch. And then I got to the second section right here where you can see that the cables start to pitch. And this is a really fun section. I feel like this is where the pattern kind of comes to life. Like that first section was a little bit boring to get through all of that. Um, it took a while. And now that I've made it to this section, I'm really having fun with it. So I am using Brooklyn Tweed Shelter for this, which is the yarn that the pattern calls for. This is my second time um, working with Brooklyn Tweed. I also knit the wool and honey out of Brooklyn Tweed's loft. So this is my first time working with Shelter. And I would say it's very similar to my experience with Loft. Um, I don't have any of the yarn breakage issues that other people have um, had with this yarn, but I wouldn't say it's my favorite to work with. I would say that it creates a really nice fabric. So I think it's worth it in the end, but there's something about this yarn that kind of hurts my hands a little bit to work with. Um, I feel like it's kind of resistant on my needles. It's one of those yarns that really 
blooms and softens up after you block it multiple times. So I can tell that the finished garment is going to be great and I'm happy I chose this yarn to work with. But yeah, I can't say that I'm like loving the experience. I did get this yarn uh, during one of their clearing out sales and they only had like four colorways and they were all like neutral. And I think this maybe was the only one that had a like a full sweater quantity. I do think this is a really good colorway for this type of garment because I can wear it with anything, but I am really over gray. Like I bought this, I think over the summer of last year. And like I said, they didn't have very many options in that sale and I did want to get the yarn on sale, but this is like the only shade of gray that I can tolerate right now. <laughs> Otherwise I'm just really, really over the gray. So um, anyway, um, like I said, I think it's a good color for this garment. I'm glad that it's a tweed yarn. I think that helps. And I'm glad that it's not like a mid or dark gray because I just, I don't know, I'm just so over that now. Lastly, I have one more whip to show you. This was a fairly recent and somewhat spontaneous cast on. My partner put together like a Christmas countdown or an advent for me and it was a total surprise and it included a mini set, a uh, mini skein set from Coast to Coast, which is one of my favorite yarn dyers. Their mini skein set was the Cashmere Sock Minis. And in that set, there were five different colorways, plus a couple extra that he ordered um, for the advent. And I thought, you know, I probably have enough for a color work yoke sweater, and then I'll just find another main color to go with it. So I was looking at a bunch of different color work yokes and I had quite a few colorways that I was working with and eventually I settled on the Paul Clay sweater by Midori Hirose. So here is where I'm at. This came together so fast, like once I decided that this is what I was doing and decided on the order of the colors. Um, it honestly knit up pretty fast. Like I'm a fairly slow color work knitter, so it did take me probably like two weeks, I think, to work on the yoke. But this was also during a really, really busy month at work. And I'm not even sure if the busyness is over, but I've been putting so many hours in at work, working early, late, working on the weekends. That's pretty unusual for me. Um, I work in the tech industry and we don't typically need to work overtime like this, but uh, for various reasons, uh, I've just been working so much and I feel like my brain has really just been focused on work lately. So the fact that I was able to get this done during that, I think is a pretty clear showcase that this is a fun pattern to work on and it works up really fast because you just wanna see it all come together. So I won't go through every single colorway, but they are listed on my Ravelry page. Um, all but one of the minis is from Coast to Coast. So I used the sock set that I mentioned, and then I also had um, a few other minis that I just had in my stash that actually went with um, other sock sets. They were from the Soup collection, which was an amazing collection. Um, so I had three minis from that and I just stole them from those skeins and was like, nope, they're going in here. And then I added one mini skein from Tiny Human Knits. This black yarn was a mini skein from her. But other than that, these are all coast to coast and it is, I love it. It's, it's giving earth, <laughs> it's giving soil and grass and water. Here's a closer look at the colors that I chose and the sequence. You can tell that I decided to go from light to dark and then back out to light. And that took me a while to decide on. Um, here's kind of a shot of all of the different pictures that I took in that process trying to figure out how I wanted to lay the colors out. I did not start with a gradient in mind, um, but the more I laid the colors out, took photos, put them in black and white, all of that, the more I realized that the gradient was the most pleasing to my eye. So that's how I decided on that. 
So I'll show you up close this white stripe. You can tell that they are two different colors, but especially when you pull it back, like it's very subtle, so much so that you really sometimes can't notice that it's a checker pattern there. And I really questioned that. I am a huge fan of subtle contrast, but I know that it doesn't like always work. The main project photo actually has a very subtle stripe in the middle. Um, and I liked the light color being on the two ends because it contrasts really well with the dark main color. So I think it all works together. I can see if someone doesn't think that it works together, but in my brain it works and I'm really happy with it. So I want to talk about the main color because I love this color so much. Um, so here's where I've gotten, I've split for the sleeves. The construction is around yoke until you finish the color work and then you do some raglan shaping, like the second half of the yoke is a raglan. So that's got a really nice fit. I've tried it on, it fits well, everything's going great with it. Um, so I split for the sleeves and then I've knit probably maybe about four inches there on the body. And this stockinette in the round project really came at the perfect time for me. Like I said, work has been wild and it's been really nice to just pick this up as a mindless, easy project I can knit without looking, whether I'm knitting in work meetings, which I can occasionally do, or just at the end of the day, like I'll literally be sitting on the couch and I'm like falling asleep and I'm just like knitting like this on this sweater, sometimes just in silence. <laughs> sometimes that is just the way the cookie crumbles. So anyway, back to the sweater. For the neck, I cast on with a provisional cast on so that I could get started right into the color work. And because I didn't have the main color picked out yet, I didn't have anything in my stash and I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do, but I also did that so that I could make neck decisions later on because I'm not entirely sure how I want the neck to fit. Um, as you can see on my wool and honey sweater, I modified this neckline so that it wouldn't like come up and kind of choke me um, right here at my throat. And I noticed that in the in some of the project photos, sometimes the neckline came up really high and it did look a little bit like it was going to choke you. So anyway, I haven't decided on that yet, but I didn't want to decide yet. I wanted to just get straight into the color work. So I will talk more about what I decide to do with the neck in my next video. I got interrupted and I'm not entirely sure what I was saying, but I think I was just talking about the neck and how I will decide what I want to do with that later. Um, and it also allowed me to wait on the main color. So I worked on the yoke and at first I kind of thought that I might go for a main color that's similar to this chocolate brown. And I actually looked at Coast to Coast's shop to see if she might have this exact colorway. Um, and she didn't. And I kind of was like, eh, maybe I actually don't want like a super matchy matchy colorway, main color. So I did some more searching. I found a few like dark browns that could get the job done, but they weren't quite right. And then I kind of had in my head that I wanted a colorway in between a deep brown, a black, and a deep purple, which... <laughs> I thought was going to be really difficult to find and I thought I would have to kind of abandon that idea. Well, I did some more searching and stumbled upon Ritual Dyes, which is becoming kind of one of my new favorite yarn dyers, and came across this colorway called Loam that really just fit the bill in every way. Just like shockingly was exactly what I was looking for but they did not have enough skeins. They only had one skein in stock. So I reached out to them to ask if they could dye more and they were like, sure, we'll put that colorway on our list when we dye more in our shop update later this month. 
and they told me the day and I patiently waited for like two weeks and snatched up three skeins of this colorway. This is Ritual Dyes Maiden, which is their superwash, yeah, 90, 10 superwash merino and nylon base. It's actually the same base as the light purple that I used in my vest. Um, so I knew that I really liked this yarn and this colorway is just perfect. In person it's really dark but it's also a tonal so it's got a lot of depth to it and it's just like perfectly in between brown black and purple like that is just what this colorway is or at least how it reads to me so I'm really enjoying this project and I think it's gonna go really fast I've been super focused on it like I said it's been the perfect mindless knitting um, and then the yoke of course while not mindless was a great distraction from the rest of my chaotic life this past month all right y'all i have been filming for way too long so i'm gonna go thank you for watching let me know what project you were working on as you watched this video if you were working on one and i'll see you in the next one